Next call to order. At this time, I'm opening up the meeting, regular meeting of the ZBA, Zoning Board of Appeals, at 6.30 p.m. <coughs> February 19th, 2020. At this time, I just want to remember all members uh, that are present in the audience that this will be a general meeting of the ZBA and we will not be accepting any type of discussion uh, or any type of questioning from the general audience or anyone else. This will be a discussion amongst the uh, board members only. At this time, I would ask all board <coughs> members to please state your name into the record. Richard Bollier. Ron Arab. Jeremy Carrier. Chair. Uh, Kathleen Broner, Vice Chair. Thank you. Our first order of business is to consider the petition of the appellant of the Granby Bow and Gun Club Incorporated seeking to appeal cease and desist order of the Granby Building Inspector concerning violations of Granby zoning bylaws, 6.29 special permitting ordinances concerning substantial expansion of a 500 yard range at 85 Chickabee Street, Granby Mass, known as Map 15, parcels C3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, and 12, as alleged and described in a letter dated November 25th, 2019, from the building inspector to the appellant. It's just a reminder that the hearing portion of this has been closed, so therefore, again, no other testimony will be brought in. No other evidence is to be brought forward. This is for discussion of the board members only. Um, with that being said, at this time, um, I just wanted to bring forward to the board members, um, based upon the evidence presented by the parties, at the appeal hearing held on February 12th, 2020. I wanted to know, do we as the Zoning Board of Appeals find that the creation and use of the 500 yard shooting range as described in the Zoning Enforcement Officers November 20th, 2019, cease and desist order constitute a substantial change, alteration or expansion of the range in violation of section 6.29 of the Granby zoning bylaws, which required a finding by the appropriate body that it was such a substantial change, alteration or expansion that a special permit and or a site plan approval was required by said zoning bylaws. Um, I'd like to have discussion on that, how the members feel on that. Do they feel that this has been a substantial um, Alteration. Any discussion? I, I, I should, yeah. Go ahead. It, regarding discussion on this matter, 40A section 15 requires when the board makes its decision and its written findings, uh, in pertinent part, the board shall cause be made a detailed record of its proceedings, indicating the vote of each member upon each question, or if absent or failing to vote, indicating such fact, and setting forth clearly the reason for, the reason for its decision and of its official actions. So I think the discussion is vitally important when the board makes its decision, whichever way as members in a board as a whole votes. So this isn't the time to be holding their tongue and actually I would say the statute requires discussion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we really do need okay. to discuss Okay, well, I'll, I'll start. Um, and, and in reviewing the materials, both um, what the applicant had presented and our zoning code officer, his letter, um, in looking at all the materials, I didn't feel that the gun club um, really indicated that there wasn't a substantial change in use. Um, enough that to overturn um, the decision of the building inspector or the zoning. Um, and in what he outlined it in from his visits from uh, the information that they had. So that's where I'm coming from the perspective. I didn't feel that there was enough um, in information or evidence to overturn um, this decision, clearly. That was, so that's my perspective. To start the conversation. Um, yeah, I'd like to add upon there. Um, obviously during our our questioning and getting some of the witnesses forward. Also, two two statements were entered into uh, evidence that were submitted in here. Um, two people that made statements and obviously submitted in were not able to actually do any type of a question directly to them. 
Um, a lot of the evidence that's brought forward is talking about since the beginning of the club, yeah. that things have been pre-existing, um, obviously from what we've seen even ourselves at a visit that we've gone to before and going through, um, we have seen substantial changes through that period of time mm -hmm. that for my thing, the biggest thing is we don't have a well-defined what is the club range, what is a range forward of the firing lines. And from what we've seen in a prior uh, visits and what we are able to see from both their own evidence that they brought <clears throat> forward and people stating that there has been small changes here and there. Um, I feel that the building inspector was very uh, thorough in what he described as for a significant change. So I believe there has been um, a large improvement to it and significant change beyond what was the original. Can I have the other two board members make yeah. any comments on what they feel about this? Well, I agree. I didn't hear from what I heard <clears throat> that it was about an upkeep on the property from earlier on in time, mm -hmm. but it, it was never explained how, what was it? <clears throat> the changes that they did, obviously I believe the 500 range was definitely in a violation of what the building inspector said. Um, the other one, I, I, I just didn't hear enough evidence on it whether it was just a upkeep from back in the, what did you say, 1940s, I think I thought I heard, and they were just trying to get back to that yeah. area there. But I, I don't think I heard enough evidence to overturn what the inspector said on it. I, f I kind of feel the same way. It was hard to dis determine what was normal main upkeep and what was new. I found that hard to, even by the aerial photographs, uh, I didn't see enough evidence to change the building inspector. Yeah. One of my biggest things was because some of the evidence with photograph can be uh, rebutted against there that they can say, you know, it's not proportionate, there's, you know, not the scale, things like that. My biggest thing is that's why I questioned the building inspector at the time, our zoning enforcement officer, Mr. Briggs, was, was there more than one <laughs> site visit? Because there are more than two site visits, and he's been there a few times, so it's not. Right. Just, I think the last time it might have been this or that. There's been a few visits out there, um, so I'm, I believe that there has been a substantial change or alteration to that area. Um, do you have more discussion on that question? No, I don't yeah. agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, so at this time, I would actually ask you whether, if you do believe that there is a substantial change or alteration or expansion to the range in violation of section 6.29 of the Granby zoning bylaws to please raise your hand and say yes 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 right. yes no so we have a unanimous decision that we believe that there has been a substantial change or alteration mm -hmm. to the property okay um, my second question that I want to bring before the board and this is a very important one that based upon the evidence presented by the parties at the appeal hearing um, held on February 12th, 2020. Do we as the Zoning Board of Appeals find that the 500 yard shooting range as described in the Zoning Enforcement Officer's November 20th, 2019 cease and desist order uh, should not be used in? Was it the 20th or the 25th? It was the sorry. 25th. 25th, sorry. Yep. Sorry, yes, I have, 25th. Yeah. 25th. <laughs> The yeah. November 25th, 2019, <coughs> I have to use my cheaters, I'm sorry people, <laughs> cease and desist order should not be used and that the cease and desist order of the zoning enforcement officer shall remain in effect until such time as a special permit and or site plan approval as required under the town's zoning bylaws has been granted by the appropriate body. Uh, any discussion on that? And again, that would be a bit of important thing to bring forward if we're going to vote upon that. Um, can you, I'm not quite, I want to hear that question just one more sure. time. So what, what are you asking specifically? It has we're the, asking if with the evidence that we're presented right. and described upon there that we should uh, keep 
the cease and desist order. Yes, okay. That That's why I'm, I just want to be clear based on, the, on his findings. By the zoning enforcement officer. Um, until, you said? Until, until they can apply for a special permit. That's the part that I wanted to get to. Right. In effect, in such time as a special permit and or site plan approval as required under the town zoning bylaws has been granted um, by the appropriate body. If we follow the, the line of <coughs> our discussion earlier with the question one, my, I, I do agree that it should still be enforced. Um, the cease and desist and dependent on applying for a special permit, a site plan, and so forth. So um, I'm in, in agreement. Okay, I agree. Apply for a special permit. Yeah. The proper permits and uh, get approval for it. And again, I, I'd go back to a lot of the evidence that's been forward with that. Uh, I believe that there was a substantial uh, change in that our zoning enforcement officer has obviously witnessed that firsthand um, and has understood that it is very important that this type of a change would need to have the special permitting that is required for substantial. Uh, improvement or changes um, so at this time if the board is ready then i would ask you on this then a yes vote would mean that the cease and desist stays in order and mr briggs decision remains unchanged a no would mean that we would override them we need a unanimous i mean a, yeah yeah uh, unanimous unanimous to overturn his decision at this time just to let that all be known because we were four board. Given that it is a five member board, but only four are present, um, having uh, Mr. Huertas having uh, recused himself, um, <laughs> but the statute does require of a five person board, four to overturn him under 40A section 15. Do you feel I need any more discussion or take a vote on that at this time? Ready to vote, okay. All in favor of upholding the decision of the zoning enforcement officer for a cease and desist, please raise your hand and say yes. 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 No. Um, at this time, uh, it's a unanimous decision, yes, to uphold Mr. Briggs' decision for a cease and desist it will remain in effect. Okay. Uh, that part of our, our meeting is over. At this time, we'll read into record our meeting notes from the last meeting <laughs> no. my cheaters aren't working as good as okay. to either yeah, so we're reading the notes from um, February 12th so okay. um, all members do have a copy uh, that we're left okay the table last meeting. so uh, what I'm about to do is yeah. read the the minutes yes, from our February 12th 2020 meeting Thanks, guys. okay Thanks. thank you good evening um, the Granby Zoning Board of Appeals public meeting on February 20, 12, 2020 was held at the Granby Senior Center, a continuation of the January 27, uh, 2020 hearing. ZBA Chair Jeremy Carey opened the meeting at 6.30 p.m. by having the members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, ZBA introduce themselves, Jeremy Carrier, Ron Harrop, Rick Bolio, Kathleen Bronner, and Anthony Hirata. Um, attorney Brian O'Toole, attorney for the town of Granby, also was present. Uh, Chair Jeremy Carrier read the public notice of the meeting to consider the petition of the Granby Bowen Gun Club seeking to appeal a cease and desist order of the Granby Code officers concerning violations of the of Granby zoning bylaws 6.29 special permitting ordinances concerning substantial expansion of a 500 yard range at 85 Chickabee Street, Granby, Mass., known as Map 15, Parcel C-3456791010, 11 and 12, as alleged and described in a letter dated uh, November 25th, 2019, from the Building Inspector to the Appellate. Chair Jeremy Chair Carrier, excuse me, read the Zoning uh, Code Officer Gregory Briggs' letter of November 25th, 2019. Um, which issued the cease and desist order into the record 
ZBA Chair and Zoning Code Officer Gregory Briggs to make a statement in regard to his findings in support of the cease and desist order. Mr. Briggs reviewed his uh, site visit to the property, noting substantial changes uh, um, in vegetation, clearly outlining a new shooting range judged to be approximately 500 yards. He noted no special permits were taken out for this new target range. Attorney uh, Justin Raffleson, representation for the appellant, um, applicant, noted a possible conflict of interest of ZBA member Anthony Heretas a former member of the Granby Bow and Gun Club. Attorney O'Toole, Town Council, took this information under advisement and suggested that a break in the proceedings take place to consult with Mr. Herrera. At the same time, ZBA member Rick Bolio shared that because of past interactions, he was familiar with the relation of Attorney Ralphson. Uh, Attorney Ralphson cited case law as to the scope in terms of what is defined as substantial changes. Attorney Raffleson interviewed Marshall Johnson, Vice President of the Granby Bowen Club, Bow and Gun Club. Mr. Johnson spoke to the scope of ongoing maintenance at the, of the Granby Bow and Gun Club. ZBA Chair questioned the vast clearing was not seen before the end of 2016. Attorney Raffleson presented two affidavits from club members to the ZBA committee. A closing statement, a statement uh, by the zoning code officer Gregory Briggs was made. He noted it had been one year since last visit and this area appeared to be substantially changed, hence necessitating a special permit for use. A brief recess was taken at 7.17 p.m. for attorney Tool to confer with ZBA member Anthony Heretta. At 7.35 p.m. the ZBA hearing resumed. Under advisement of Granby's legal counsel, Mr. Herretas Her yeah, will abstain from participating in the vote to override the decision of the zoning code officer cease and desist order. Chairman Jeremy Carrier disclosed that during the brief recess, Mr. Briggs brought forward two photos or two pictures. The counsel of the uh, appellant objected that they were not presented with a copy. Copies of the, uh, the two items were made and presented to the counsel for the appellant. Mr. Briggs shared several photos uh, and photos of cutting plans were submitted. They were numbered for the record so that they can be appropriately shared with the applicant. Attorney Raffleson noted that the cutting plans did not pertain to this issue. Mr. Carrier asked if the cutting plans were inside the area that is in debate at this hearing or is it for other areas of this vast property. The counsel for the appellant refused to comment on the cutting as they stated it was irrelevant and no witness for the club would testify about the application for the cutting plans. Being that uh, there were, was no further business, the ZBA hearing was closed and ZBA Chair Carrier opened the ZBA meeting. Attorney O'Toole counseled the ZBA committee that they had 100 days from <clears throat> December 16, 2019 to render the decision. ZBA committee members wished to review, doc review documents presented that evening and determined to take a vote at the next convenient date for both parties. <coughs> Since February 19, 2020 was offered by Applicants Council as a convenient <coughs> date, it was determined to hold a ZBA meeting to render its decision if, if it had decided at that time. The meeting date was set for February 19, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. tentatively set at the Senior Center facility if available. The meeting minutes from January 27, 2020 were read and as being read corrections were made uh, to the dates of February 27th to January 27th by putting a single strike through the date and then having a correction <coughs> with, made with initials JPC of the chair put by each correction. A motion was made and second to accept the minutes as read and corrected. A vote was taken and passed unanimously. The ZBA uh, chair reminded all members that at this point the hearing was closed and no more evidence or testimony may be obtained or, or presented. The case cannot be discussed outside of the open meeting format. Being no further business, the ZBA meeting concluded at 7.57 p.m. We respectfully submitted. Jeremy P. Carrier. There you go. Zoning Board of Appeals. I'll second. 
<laughs> All in favor, accept. Aye, okay. okay. These have been read into notes. I'll just sign these and get this. Okay. There's one. Do any of the board members have any other items to discuss this evening? I don't. No. 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 Negative. No motion. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Before we do that. Okay. 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 All right. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, then more on the procedural aspect. That portion of 48 section 15 that I read okay. continues regarding when the decision is required. Okay. And as uh, most things that are uh, written by committee out of the State House in Boston. It's not particularly clear. Um, it goes by setting forth the detailed record. It says, all of which shall be filed within 14 days in the office of the city or town clerk. What it doesn't say is, is, is it within 14 days of today's decision, or is it within 14 days of the 100-day window that the, uh, <coughs> that the board had to make its decision. Um, there has been some, one case, uh, an appellate court case, Burnham versus the town of South Hadley, that states that uh, the statute has been interpreted to mean that a board of zoning appeals is allowed to file its decision within 14 days following the 100 day period in which it must act. But if the board had failed to act within 100 days, a constructive grant of the appeal would have been uh, entitled. The, I guess the point of what I'm saying is we shouldn't be messing around with this. Right. Uh, Mr. Right. Harrier, uh, with the uh, what, what we did um, with the special permit last time, it would be my advice to get the written detailed findings um, and uh, record of the vote um, done sooner rather than later. Um, I don't want to be making new case law um, no, like the not. town of Hadley did in 2003. Um, where yeah. they were saved by this particular case, but it's it's still rather a it's not something deadlines I don't like to mess with, especially when the statute isn't mm -hmm. specifically clear in the right. body itself. Get it, get it Time done. is of the essence. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so thank you for that advice. What was the hundred days again? That was pretty soon, right? March. It March. would have been the end of March, I believe. I believe okay. I calculated out. Yeah, it was I wrote it down somewhere. It was it extended. Was, yeah. So the 100 days from the December 18th filing date would have been March 26th or so. Okay. But there was also an agreement to continue the hearing and any decision. which So that would have added seven or ten more days uh, on top of that, that end date there. But again, I do not like to uh, cut, cut it close. Best advice is to have the decision submitted Correct. within 14 days. I can talk with Mr. Carrier. Uh, it would be essentially the same procedure that we did last time. Very good. Okay. Do you have anything else? Uh, to do that. Okay. Any comments or anything else on that no, before we? No. Okay. okay. So therefore, motion made. Motion. Motion, motion yeah. made. I'll second. It. Second. Okay. All in favor of adjourning. Aye. Okay. Aye. At this time, Aye. we're closing the meeting of the ZBA at 6:53 p.m.